As we continue our journey into utilizing the Linux command line, we'll focus on how to navigate the Linux file system. Now, I want you to imagine a tree. What did you notice first about the tree? Would you say the trunk or the branches? These might definitely get your attention, but what about its roots? Everything about a tree starts in the roots. Something similar happens when we think about the Linux file system. The File System Hierarchy Standard, or FHS, is the component of the Linux OS that organizes data. This file system is a very important part of Linux because everything we do in Linux is considered a file somewhere in the system's directory. The FHS is a hierarchical system, and just like with a tree, everything grows and branches out from the root. The root directory is the highest level directory in Linux. It's designated by a single slash. Subdirectories branch off from the root directory. The subdirectories branch out further and further away from the root directory. When describing the directory structure in Linux, slashes are used when tracing back through these branches to the root. For example, here, the first slash indicates the root directory. Then it branches out a level into the home subdirectory. Another slash indicates it is branching out again. This time, it's to the analyst subdirectory that is located within home. When working in security, it is essential that you learn to navigate a file system to locate and analyze logs, such as log files. You'll analyze these log files for application usage and authentication. With that background, we're now ready to learn the commands commonly used for navigating the file system. First, pwd prints the working directory onto the screen. When you use this command, the output tells you which directory you're currently in. Next, ls displays the names of files and directories in the current working directory. And finally, cd navigates between directories. This is the command you'll use when you want to change directories. Let's use these commands in bash. First, we'll type the command pwd to display the current location and then press enter. The output is the path to the analyst directory where we're currently working. Next, let's input ls to display the files and directories within the analyst directory. The output is the name of four directories, logs, old reports, projects, and reports, and one file named updates.txt. So let's say we now want to go into the logs directory to check for unauthorized access. We'll input cd logs to change directories. We won't get any output on the screen from the cd command, but if we enter pwd again, its output indicates the working directory is logs. Logs is a subdirectory of the analyst directory. As a security analyst, you'll also need to know how to read file content in Linux. For example, you may need to read files that contain configuration settings to identify potential vulnerabilities. Or you might look at user access reports while investigating unauthorized access. When reading file content, there are some commands that will help you. First, cat displays the content of a file. This is useful, but sometimes you won't want the full contents of a large file. In these cases, you can use the head command. It displays just the beginning of a file, by default 10 lines. Let's try out these commands. Imagine that we want to read the contents of access.txt and we're already in the working directory where it's located. First, we input the cat command and then follow it with the name of the file, access.txt. And bash returns the full contents of this file. Let's compare that to the head command. When we input the head command followed by our file name, only the first 10 lines of this file are displayed. Wow, this section had lots of action and it's just the beginning. I'm glad you learned how security analysts can use essential commands to navigate the system. Now that we covered PWD, LS, and CD and are familiar with these basic commands for navigating the Linux file system, let's look at a couple of ways to find what you need within this system. As a security analyst, your work will likely involve filtering for the information you need. Filtering means searching your system for specific information that can help you solve complex problems. For example, imagine that your team determines a piece of malware contains a string of characters. You might be tasked with finding other files with the same string to determine if those files contain the same malware. But Linux is a good place to start basic filtering. First, 
We'll start with grep. The grep command searches a specified file and returns all lines in the file containing a specified string. Here's an example of this. Let's say we have a file called updates.txt, and we're currently looking for lines that contain the word OS. If the file is large, it would take a long time to visually scan for this. Instead, after navigating to the directory that contains updates.txt, we'll type the command grep os updates.txt into the shell. Notice how the grep command is followed by two arguments. The first argument is the string we're searching for, in this case, os. The second argument is the name of the file we're searching through, updates.txt. When we press enter, bash returns all lines containing the word os. Now, let's talk about piping. Piping is a Linux command that can be used for a variety of purposes. In a moment, we'll focus on how it can be used for filtering. But first, let's talk about the general idea of piping. The piping command sends a standard output of one command as standard input into another command for further processing. It's represented by the vertical bar character. In our context, we can refer to this as the pipe character. Take a moment and imagine a physical pipe. Physical pipes have two ends. On one end, for example, water might enter the pipe from a hot water tank. Then it travels through the pipe and comes out on the other end in a sink. Similarly, in Linux, piping also involves redirection. Output from one command is sent through the pipe and then is used on the other side of the pipe. Grep can also be incorporated after a pipe. Let's focus on this example. The first command ls instructs the operating system to output the file and directory contents of the report's subdirectory. But because the command is followed by the pipe, the output isn't returned to the screen. Instead, it's sent to the next command. As we just learned, grep searches for a specified string of characters. In this case, it's users. But where is it searching? Since grep follows a pipe, the output of the previous command indicates where to search. In this case, that output is a list of files and directories within the report's subdirectory. It will return all files and directories that contain the word users. Okay, let's explore this in Bash. So we can better understand how the filter works, let's first output everything in the report's directory. If we were already in the directory, we would just need to input ls. But since we're not, we'll also specify the path to this directory. When we press enter, the output indicates there are seven files in the reports directory. Because we want to return only the files that contain the word users, we'll combine this ls command with piping and the grep command. As the output demonstrates, Linux has been instructed to return only files that contain the word users. The two files that don't contain this string no longer appear. So now you have two different ways that you can filter in Linux while working as an analyst.